Matthias, Daddy. Ja, jongen, ja. Step through the closing doors, please. Matthias, Daddy. Good afternoon. We're working hard to save wildlife in wild places around the world. Today I'm going to take you on a tour of Asia, which stops in China, India, Cambodia, Nepal, Pakistan, and Tibet, all without ever leaving the beautiful Bronx. We begin our journey by crossing over the Bronx River. At over 23 miles long, this freshwater river is home to fish, ducks, turtles, geese, and migrating birds. Whether it's the Bronx River here in New York or the Irrawaddy River half a world away, rivers provide valuable resource to wildlife. As we enter the first meadow, we're looking for two deer species and an antelope species. But this time of day, they've migrated over that hill to our left. We'll catch up with them in five to eight minutes. Farms using space in and around India's Kanha National Park. These people were coming into contact with the deer and the tigers that were also living there. Through cooperation with the Indian government, local communities agreed to relocate the villages. By moving, the farmers still had land to farm, but the tigers and their prey got more room to roam. That little reddish brown deer was called an Indian muntjac. We'll talk about him later in the tour. We all know that an animal that's extinct is no longer with us, like the dinosaur and the dodo bird. The animals in our next exhibit were completely extinct in nature and could only be found in captivity. We're talking about the Mongolian wild horse, or Przewalski's horse. While there are genetic differences between wild horses and domestic horses, there are physical differences as well. They're stockier in build. They've got shorter legs and an erect mane that's lacking the forelock, the piece of mane that falls between the eyes of a domestic horse. They're rocking the mohawk. They were born genetically awesome. We've got a long and varied history with this horse. Dates back over 20,000 years. And I have some of that for you right here. The first accounts of Mongolian wild horses come from rock engravings, paintings, and even cave drawings that date back more than 20,000 years. And the first written accounts were as Przewalski's horse. Captive breeding of Mongolian wild horses began in 19... Plans aim to help these animals survive. Zoos across the country work together to maintain genetically diverse populations of rare and endangered species. When you get to the stump, look to the back fence line, and you'll see our herd of brow antler deer. They get their name from the male's antlers that look like two bushy eyebrows coming up out of the top of their head. They're currently classified as vulnerable, as all of their habitat has been taken over for farmland in their native Cambodia. To the right bottle, males stand six feet at the shoulder, ten feet long, and weigh two thousand pounds. <laughs> With their incredible size and horns, a gower can take on anything, even a tiger. What threatens these beautiful creatures is lack of an Asian habitat and diseases they catch from domestic cattle. If the horns point straight up, it's a male. If they curve in at the top, it's a female. <laughs> It's easy to forget. It's easy to forget sometimes that the Bronx Zoo sits in the heart of an urban setting. But that noise you hear behind us now is traffic on the Bronx River Parkway. The large wooden fence in front of you obstructing your view. But when I have no trouble finding him today, he's in the pond taking a bath. He's on the left-hand side of the pond. 
in the wild, tigers will eat wild pig and deer. And pig, he will sit down, please. He'll eat 40 pounds of meat in one setting, and then not eat again for three days. That's the equivalent of 160 hamburgers to you and I. If you ate 160 hamburgers, you wouldn't eat for three days either. With less than 3,000 tigers remaining in the wild, and only 1,000 of them being breeding They're waiting to go down underneath the tracks and into their shelters behind us. It's time for bed. We're now at the back of our first meadow. Little deer with the white spots on them are called axis deer. Axis deer have the distinction of keeping their spots their entire adult lives. Little guys with the white bellies are black buck antelope, smallest antelope species in Asia. Fully grown, two and a half feet at the shoulder. Males have horns, females do not. And these are the Barasinga. The word Barasinga means 12 time in the Hindi language, as males can have 12 to 14 points on their antlers. They're the ones we heard the conservation story about back at the huts. Imagine a pig that has tusks that protrude up through its snout and back towards its eyes. This pig is called the Babarusa. The word Babarusa means pig deer in the Malay language, as the natives thought their tusks resembled deer antlers. We've got to come into a bamboo thicket. In the first, this is Julian, our male, with those impressive tusks, right hand side, Asia's version of Pumbaa. And here by the log, we have Kathy and Hillshire, our mother and piglet. These hairless pigs blend in wonderfully with their environment and hail from the island of Zulawesi. They're highly endangered. If you didn't see the Babarusa, have no fear. You can't miss our next two lovely ladies. This is Patty and Maxine, our Asian elephants. Please refrain from standing or making loud noises, as we do not wish to startle them. Patty and Maxine are 44 years of age and weigh just over 10,000 pounds. They eat fruits, vegetables, 200 pounds of hay, and 60 gallons of water each, each day. The elephant's trunk is an incredible tool with over 40,000 muscles in it. That's more than the entire human body. It's got a finger-like appendage at the end. With it, they can pick up an egg without breaking it or tear down a small tree with great force. Don't let the wrinkles fool you, these are two pampered ladies. Twice a week they receive baths and pedicures. As we say goodbye to Patty and Maxine, we're going to say hello to my favorite lady at the zoo, and that's Callie, our Indian rhino. Many people describe a rhino's skin as armor-plated. It's actually very thin with lots of folds and needs protection from insect bites and the sun. To do this, the rhino will sit in a mud wallow, cover herself with mud, and this acts as a natural sunscreen and insect repellent. Callie was born here at the Bronx Zoo in 1986 and weighs 3,500 pounds. With less than 2,000 rhinos remaining in the wilds of India and Nepal, we're very fortunate to care for five of these endangered creatures. Caring for rhinos is one thing, breeding is quite another. We're the luckiest zoo in the U.S. of A. We've had 11 rhino births here at the Bronx Zoo. Callie was our first, 1986. The latest was in the summer of 2014. How many moms have I got on the train? Here's something you'll appreciate, Mom. An Indian rhino is pregnant for 16 months. And after being pregnant for almost a year and a half, she'll give birth to a baby weighing approximately 150 pounds. The rhino baby will only stay with its mother for two to three years, though weaning can take 16 months. So you don't have to worry about college. Some very large chocolate colored deer. These are the sandbar deer, largest deer in Southern Asia. They all stand five and a half feet at the shoulder and weigh 650 pounds. 
They have three bars on each antler with three points on each bar. Coming down the hill is one of those little red Indian muntjac, fully grown, two and a half feet at the shoulder, also known as a barking deer for the sound he makes when excited. The large tan animals with the black and white markings on their hooves are Neogai antelope, largest and fastest antelope in Asia. The word Neogai means blue bull in the Hindi language, as males will have a blue-gray coat upon maturity. There's another Indian muntjac top of the hill. The deer with the white spots on it is a Formosan Sika deer from the island of Taiwan, formerly known as Formosa. They were hunted to near extinction in the 1970s and can only be found in national parks and zoos. This is a red-crowned crane, the newest member of our monorail family, largest and rarest of the crane species. She stands five feet high with a seven-foot wingspan, spends her summers in Siberia, then migrates to southern Korea for the winter. We're now at the highest point of our journey, 35 feet above the Bronx River. The Wildlife Conservation Society realizes how important it is to maintain the Bronx River and Greenway, both as a healthy environment for wildlife and for Bronx residents to enjoy. Once we successfully cross the river for the second time, we're in the Rocky Himalayas, the perfect environment for two species of mountain goat. The first is the Markhor, national animal of Pakistan, largest member of the goat family, most identifiable by the male's impressive beards and spiral horns that can reach up to five feet in length. The word Markhor means snake eater in Persian. As legend has it, he ate a snake and that's how it escaped. The little guys are baby markhor. We've got eight or nine babies in the exhibit. You never know where they'll be. Next visit, be sure to visit on your next, yeah, next visit, be sure to visit the Red Panda display at the Himalayan Highlands, a short walk from the monorail. We thank you. We also encourage you to become a member of the Conservation Society. Members receive free admission to all five of our parks for one year. Premium level members get free parking, free rides and attractions, a commemorative t-shirt, and much, much more. Stop by any membership cart today and apply today's admission to a membership. We're creeping along because we have a red signal in front of us with train traffic.